Hey everybody, this is Will and for the month of June, I'm doing something a little different. Instead of creating a tutorial uh, where I show you a specific thing in Ableton Live, I am trying to answer questions that you have submitted. Uh, if you have a question you want me to answer, then send it to questions at from studio to stage.com. You can send us an email at any time um, and we'll get that on the list. Now, if this is after uh, June 2021, don't worry, still send it to questions at from studio to stage.com uh, and that question may make it into a future video or inform a future tutorial. Now, if you would rather speak one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can set up a 15-minute call with me. We could talk about whatever, talk about gear, Ableton Live, automation, live streaming, whatever it is, try to answer any of those questions for you. And I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. You can find info about both of those in the description. Okay, so for today's question, I'm taking a question from a from Studio Stage subscriber, David. Um, and this is a great question that, I, honestly, I've gotten from a lot of folks. Um, and it's something people don't really understand because Ableton handles this differently. Here we go. So David's question is, um, Will, I just purchased a new MacBook Pro to run Ableton Live for shows and remote recording. I'm going to use my current MacBook Air as a backup. How do I transfer Ableton Live 11 uh, from my old computer to my new computer? And David says, uh, would I have to put in the serial number to have it function? Great question, David. Uh, and I think this is a great question for all of us because the process of transferring Ableton from one computer to the next is a little different. Ableton handles this differently than a lot of other software. So I thought a great way to demo this is I am actually installing a new copy of Ableton Live on my computer. Now, this is Ableton Live 10 suite. It's not Ableton Live 11. Uh, but for the sake of example, this info screen is going to be really similar. No matter what edition of Live you have, no matter what version of Live you have, you're going to get prompted with a screen like this that's going to say, uh, welcome to whatever version you have. Please take a moment to authorize your software. Now, it's important at this point before I show you this process to explain how Ableton Live handles serial numbers and authorizations. So when you purchase a copy of Ableton Live, you get a serial number. And with that serial number, it gives you the right to authorize Live on two different computers at the same time. And it's got to be two computers that you own. So in David's example, this is this is a perfect example. He's got a brand new MacBook Pro. He's got an older MacBook Air, and he wants to have Ableton on both of those at the same time. This is perfectly legal. David's doing nothing wrong by doing this. The way Ableton as a company thinks about this is um, one is going to be your studio computer, one's going to be your live computer, or one's going to be your live main computer, another's going to be your live backup computer. There's nothing wrong with this. Now, where it gets a little shady ethically is when your backup computer is your drummer's computer, right? And your main computer is your computer. Now you can use both of those copies at the same time. But again, that doesn't mean that you buy one copy and share it with you and a friend. It's not like you split the cost to make that happen, right? That's not what Ableton is hoping you do to, to in this setup. So for David's situation and scenario, he's already got Ableton on one computer authorized, ready to go. He's got that one serial number. Uh, you need to add your serial number to your account at ableton.com. If you haven't done that, go ahead and set that up. But then once you get that serial number set up, it's time to install in a new computer. So I've gone through the process of installing Ableton Live. Again, I'm using 10 for the example of this, but just bear with me. Ableton Live 10 Suite. Um, and now it's time for me to authorize. I haven't entered a serial number. I've just prompted with this screen because again, my serial number is saved in my account. Here's where most people get thrown off is they go, where do I enter my serial number? How do I deauthorize my old computer? Now, David is keeping his old version, but maybe you've got a brand new computer. You have no plan of using your old computer or you're selling your old computer. How do you deauthorize that copy? Well, there's no way to deauthorize live. A lot of software, you can go into preferences, click deauthorize, add your serial to an, uh, another computer. But a lot of software with that one serial, it only allows you to install on one computer. Again, with Ableton, with one serial, you get two authorizations. So here's how this is going to work. I'm already logged into my account at ableton.com. Once this is prompted, uh, you get a couple options. One, you can authorize later. And if you uh, authorize later, then your just save and export are going to be disabled. Okay, So it's going to function like the demo version of live once you run out of demo time. Or you can say there's no internet on this computer. Um, if you do that, then you're gonna get in a situation where you gotta have one of these guys, like a thumb drive to transfer a file. I've had to do that before, um, but it, it's not fun, but it's not the end of the world if you have to. But in this scenario, I'm connected to the internet, I should mention here, you, I promise I'm getting to it, uh, getting to the point. I should mention here, you don't always have to have internet connection to use Ableton. That's one of the things I like. And one of the reasons it makes it such a great um, tool for performing on stage 
is um, I basically load this in and I'm ready to go. I don't have to leave, once I authorize it, it's ready to go. I don't have to leave the internet connected at all times to use it, uh, unlike some other software. Okay, so again, now let's get to it. With this window open, I'm gonna click authorize with ableton.com. And again, like I mentioned, I'm already logged into my account. This is gonna pop open a new tab and it's gonna tell me or ask me, um, please choose the license you wanna authorize. Now, again, I mentioned I have, um, I have Ableton Live 10 I'm trying to install, uh, but let's pretend I had Live 11 Suite. And I, I think I wanna pick this because I wanna show you a specific thing. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna click Authorize. Uh, do you wanna allow this page to open Ableton Live 11 Suite? Let's let's pretend yes, okay, so we'll hit Allow. If this, if I had the correct serial here, right, if I had Ableton Live 10 and then Ableton Live 11 and everything worked, uh, then what would happen, let's see if this pops up so I can show you guys in a second. Uh, you could see it's retrieving the authorization. It would pop up a message like this. You have successfully authorized live. Thank you and have fun. Again, don't be confused by that. I started in 10, then opened 11. That's just because I don't have a license for 10. That's what I'm essentially doing there. But then once you authorized, um, you're, you're pretty much good to go. Now let me pull up another license here. Give me just a second. Um, I wanna show you what happens if you've used up all your authorizations. Let's see if I can find this here. Okay, here we go. So let's show you what this uh, portion of my account looks like. Let's say I had a brand new computer and I wanted to install Live 11 on it and I went to authorize. You'll see I get a message here. This license has no authorizations left. And again, what this means is I essentially, with that one serial, get two authorizations, studio, stage, primary, backup, how we want to look at this. Um, I have this copy of Suite on my laptop, which again is my backup computer, but now my Mac Mini, uh, M1 Mac Mini, that's kind of my primary computer, okay? So this has been authorized, but let's say I get another MacBook Pro uh, and I want to install Live on that. Based on this screen, it looks like I can't, but that's actually not the case. I, it just means I need to request another authorization. So I can click this here, request another authorization. And you're gonna be taken to a screen where uh, it basically is gonna say, I need more authorizations because, and then in this section, you can type and say, um, I got a brand new computer. I'm not using my other computer. Um, can you please authorize whatever? What I found, there's yet to be a situation that I've needed more authorizations that Ableton did not grant them. Now, obviously if, they look at your account and they mention on the page, they handle this, you know, case by case basis. But if they look at your account and they're like, wait, this guy is authorized on 14 different computers, which isn't possible. But if they looked and saw it across multiple computers, unless you're messaging them frequently and saying, hey, I got a new computer, I got a new computer. Um, at some point they're gonna go, this guy's either made of money or um, he's trying to install this on a lot of different machines. And so it's a case by case basis, but for someone like David, who again is going from one computer to the next, just installing the software and clicking authorize nine times out of 10 is gonna work. Unless that's a license you've lived with for a long time and you switch a lot of computers, you're not gonna have any issues. It's just gonna authorize, you're gonna be ready to go. And then again, like I mentioned, you can use that computer offline. You don't have to stay connected to the internet. But if you find yourself in a situation, again, where you need to uh, you need to authorize this, add it to a third computer, and you have no authorizations left, then that's when you can go into this box, enter your info, and you're good to go. There's nothing to worry about there. So David, fantastic question. Again, if you have a question that you want me to answer on a upcoming video, then send that to questions at fromstudiotostage.com. It can be about a basic install question about Ableton Live. It could be an advanced question about Ableton Live. Question about how to get started, maybe best software, hardware suggestions, whatever it is, send it to questions at fromstudiotostage.com. You can send us an email at any time and we'll get that on the list for future questions. And again, as a reminder, if you'd rather chat one-on-one, -on -one, you can book a 15 minute call. We can chat about anything you want um, or a uh, one hour one-on-one -on -one session uh, over Zoom. We record it, have a great time and we can work out any issues you have. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Take care, bye-bye.